Hello everyone, I'm your host Seltzer and we're so excited to welcome you to North Star, the second season of year six of Rainbow Six Siege. We have a jam-packed show coming your way and to kick things off, we've got Chris Waters and the Ubisoft news team to navigate us through what's new in North Star. North Star is the next season coming to Rainbow Six Siege and it'll be bringing the thunder. The Thunderbird, to be specific. She's the new operator who's dealing out some healing for the defenders and potentially for the attackers. North Star is also delivering numerous game improvements, including some notable changes to barrel attachments, plus some balancing tweaks that will make some things easier to see and others much more difficult. Here's everything you need to know about North Star playing out on the new casual rework of the favela map. Our new operator is Thunderbird, a speedy defender who hails from the Nakoda nations of the northern prairies of North America. Armed with the Spear 308 assault rifle outfitted with NATO sights, or the SPAS-15 shotgun as her primary, and a sidearm choice of the Q929 pistol or the Bearing 9, she wields her formidable arsenal in conjunction with her choice of explosives, impact grenades or a nitro cell, as you prefer. When it comes to her gadget, well, say hello to the Kona station. Once Thunderbird deploys one of these devices and it arms itself, it'll shoot a tasty health nugget to the first operator who enters its radius. If multiple defenders are within range, the one with the lowest health gets the juice. The healing works like a shot from Doc's Stim Pistol. It will restore lost health and even overheal you, but any health above your max HP will appear as blue in your health bar and slowly dissipate over time. After dispensing a single dose, the station goes on cooldown until the next one is ready. Defenders will see a cooldown timer, while attackers can wait to see a cone of blue light that indicates a charge is ready. And their patience could pay off because a charged Kona station will heal anyone who enters its radius, not just defenders. Using Thatcher's EMP to temporarily disable a Kona station rather than destroying it could earn an attacker a nice little health boost for a post-plant situation, so it behooves Thunderbird to keep tabs on her Kona station situation. And there's one more thing. A Kona Station charge can be used by a down but not out operator to get themselves back on their feet. The DBNO operator will have to manually trigger the revive, but if used properly and with a little bit of luck, Kona Stations can do wonders for defender survivability. Combine one with a deployable shield and Jaeger's ADS to create a tough defensive position. Or hide a couple in key positions around the map to make your roamers even harder to take down. Thunderbird brings a powerful loadout and an empowering gadget to the defending team, but North Star has even more in store. From barrel attachment updates that'll change how some guns perform to operator gadget tweaks for Smoke, Mira, Maestro, and Malusi, there's a lot coming to Rainbow Six Siege this season. We'll leave it to Rachel and the development team to tell you more. Thanks, Chris. North Star is bringing some great changes to Siege. So let's start with Favela, a map that had a lot of character and a lot of ways for attackers to kill defenders. For this casual rework, the level design team completely redesigned the floor plan and most of the very destructible exterior walls. Here's level designer Joseph Rene to welcome you to the new Favela. So in Skull Rain, we tried to include a lot of destruction on the outside. Well, we went a bit overboard. So it really created a lot of uh, difficult keys for the um, defenders. They couldn't roam, they couldn't rotate, they couldn't hold any angle. angles. It was really hard to anchor. The destruction on the exterior walls can be really fun. And we've seen it in Clubhouse and uh, other maps. But uh, it really needs to be used in specific places. The objective for the new favela was really to um, keep it simple, uh, keep it balanced. Uh, I will tone down the, uh, the chaos of uh, the original map while still keeping that same brashness, the same um, quick fights, the same quick reflex needed. 
I can't really go through all the changes we made from objective to objective because the layout is completely changed. Uh, basically, the players are getting a new map because of that. It means less rooms, but bigger rooms. Basically, there, this is a new map set within the same exterior. I wouldn't say we simplified the layout, but uh, we made it really more clear. In the old one, I would enter the map and be lost. Um, that's one thing I think is great with the new Favelize. The artists have made a really great work, the color coding and also the thematics. So you know where you are in the, in the map because, uh, okay, now I, there's only one kind of uh, assets, one kind of uh, furniture that is used here. It's, it makes for an easier traversal and navigation. You know where you are. You know what are the next rooms beside you. You know what are the rooms after that room. So it makes for a great navigation, a great uh, flow from room to room. Uh, and then you can have all the rotations that are still possible. It, the, the, a lot, there is a lot of options for both defenders and attackers to uh, move um, around the map. Op four, last operator standing. Friendly is victorious. Thunderbird is the new operator coming in North Star. She hails from the prairies of North America and brings some extra healing power to the defending team. Writer Alisa Saliba and game designer Dominic Clement are here to tell you more. So when we worked on uh, Thunderbird and her gadgets, we kind of explored um, a sort of uh, war gameplay. So when, when I say war gameplay is a station or a, a gadget that you deploy and it becomes like an area of interest for the defenders and even for the attackers. But uh, we really wanted to have a gadget that was sort of a secondary objective, uh, something that the attackers would have to kind of focus on to destroy because um, we wanted something that could be stronger the longer it, it existed in the round. These turrets are very intelligent. They have their own uh, little personality. You're, you're going you're to see it uh, uh, when you play the, the operator. They have a two meter radius. And if anyone walks within this two meter radius, the, the turret is going to scan them and determine if they, they need a, a healing or not. So they're going to look around and try to see if uh, anyone needs some help. So the gadget can be used in mainly like two major ways. Uh, you can put the, the station uh, directly inside the objective and um, use them as like a safe area that you can fall back to and uh, get healed and then go back into the, like, the more dangerous areas. You can also use the gadget in choke points. Uh, so imagine you're on Oregon and Bunker, you have a smoke, uh, you can put a station right there so your smoke is going to really like that because you're going to be able to, uh, to get healed and uh, survive a bit longer there. But uh, you can place them at areas that are really like high intensity, high danger, and uh, it's going to help people survive a, a bit longer. What's interesting about this gadget is uh, it doesn't discriminate. If you're an attacker and you're within the range, you're also going to, be, going to get healed. Uh, obviously, uh, there's a, a prioritization on the turret, so if for any reason you have a defender and an attacker at the same area within the range, uh, the defender is going to be healed uh, first. If you go into DBNO within the radius of the, the, the turret or close to it and you crawl up to it, uh, you will receive a, a charge also and you're going to have the uh, possibility to uh, revive yourself uh, whenever you want. So it's not instant, um, you're going to get the, uh, the charge, you're going to receive the pellet and you're going to be able to maybe crawl to something somewhere a bit safer and uh, rest yourself. Uh, you, can, you can do it with the attackers and defenders. So if an attacker goes down next to one, he's going to be able to pick himself up. Any utility clear will be able to deal with a gadget. It's uh, vulnerable to bullets, vulnerable to explosions. Your typical, you know, IQ, uh, Twitch, um, Flores, and Thatcher. With the EMP grenade, you can disable the, the, the gadget. And let's say you have someone playing on the gadget behind a deployable shield, and you really have to push this operator and get, out, get it out of the, the way. Uh, you can throw an EMP grenade, disable the, the turret, and then push whoever's playing on the turret and you now have a gadget that you can use for yourself. So the gadget will come back online and you can use it to heal yourself. So primary weapon, she has the Spear 308, which is a Finca's AR. It's a very good gun. It's a low fire rate, but a very powerful gun. She also has the Spaz 15, uh, which is uh, the uh, auto shot gun that you can find on the Cavera. Secondary weapon, she has the uh, Bearing 9, which, which uh, did receive a, a small recoil buff. So I think uh, Ivana players were going to appreciate that. 
She also has the Q929 pistol. Clearly with the kit we gave her, we expect people to play her as a roamer, um, but she can very well be a very strong anchor also. With her very good gun, she can be very an, an aggressive anchor player. She can get to engagement and get back to her leading station and get healed. She's going to work well with obviously deployable shields. Uh, if you have a deployable shield, you can play behind the shield with the station, get the heal. Thunderbird is strong against uh, tick damage operator. Uh, when I say tick damage, I mean like capital with this firebolt. Uh, if you have a Kono station next to you and you get uh, a firebolt to, to the face, you're going to be able to probably uh, survive a bit longer and potentially even survive the, the fire. That's something that uh, in the game hasn't been uh, super present, which is uh, healing and people healing each other. I'm a, I'm a duck main, I have almost 100 hours in the, on duck, and uh, I have to admit, I don't use my heal always on my teammate. I usually may, m use it on myself. So to have an operator right now that can really focus on healing your team and um, making sure that they can survive till the end of the round is, is, is something that new and something that I think new, new players are going to appreciate especially if they impact themselves at the beginning of the round, which is something I've done plenty of time. Thunderbird was born in the Nakota Territories in Saskatchewan. Her civilian name is Mina Sky. Uh, she has a very close relationship with her community, uh, as well as her immediate family. Her mother and father uh, instilled Nakota values. Uh, she's also very close with her father. He was the first person to introduce her to a helicopter engine. She learned to take one apart before she ever learned to fly one. Thunderbird is a very proud character. Uh, she's daring, a risk taker. She values her community and she's also a protector, whether it's of people, the community, or the land. So Thunderbird's first introduction to uh, a military experience was the Bold Eagle program. Uh, she completed basic military training at the age of 17, uh, along with learning traditions and practices with community elders. Uh, she then joined the Canadian Air Force and then got her basic medical training so she could work in search and rescue. Working with uh, a character like Thunderbird, we had three consultants from the Nakota Nations. There's facts you might not think of that are uh, important or have significance within the culture. Uh, for example, we uh, put in Thunderbird's background that she researched uh, hydrology. Uh, this is something that really resonated with our consultants uh, because of the connection for, of water to the Nakota Nations. There is the issue of access to clean sources of drinking water uh, within most First Nation territories. This also informed the choice of her code name. Thunderbird was actually suggested by our consultants and it really resonated with us as well. The Thunderbird is the bringer of water. So it just all kind of ties in and comes together. Uh, so we try to incorporate as much of the culture as we can with the character. Uh, our voice actress speaks Nakota. Uh, we try in any narrative form that we can to have her speak the language. You'll notice uh, the traditional warrior tattoos on her chin and wagia. Uh, the word on the back of her jacket is actually the Nakoda uh, word for a thunderbird. We try to instill a sense of belonging by giving people something to relate to. Whether it's the background of a character, it can be where they were raised, where they were born, uh, cultural identity, or even just a specialization in training or school. Uh, even if they identify with one aspect of a character's personality. Uh, any way you interact or feel a connection uh, immediately instills that sense of belonging. In our future of Siege Reveal last season, we opened up about the type of big balance changes that we'd be rolling out in year six. To discuss two of these changes scheduled to launch with North Star, plus some updates to Smoke's toxic canisters, we have game designer David Perpignan in Barcelona.
The gadget from Elusi, it's really hard to get around it. Uh, operators have to have a pretty specific loadout to get rid of it easily. Uh, something with explosives, let's say a grenade or a gun 6, that will help you to get rid of it. But if you don't have those, you have to get into the uh, detection area and risk to do a melee on it. So it's pretty, pretty dangerous. Uh, at the same time, it's super strong because it has both a slow effect on you and also it's giving intos to the defenders that you are around the area so in general it's a pretty pretty strong uh, device what we've done is that the gadget now is deployed close and it will open only when the attackers are entering the detection area once it's open uh, attackers will be able to deal with it either with bullets or a melee hit we also kept uh, the gadget vulnerable to explosives so you can get rid of it in the old way but now uh, you have more tools. We think that the Banshees uh, will need to be deployed by Melusi more carefully because you don't want uh, players to have direct line of sight with them. You want them to get surprised uh, by the Banshees, similarly to how we play the proximity alarms, for example. And also for attackers, uh, you'll have more options to deal with it. Both. Mira and Maestro have two gadgets that are very strong in one of the key aspects of Rainbow Six, that is the Intel. They both help you to control uh, pretty wide areas, either with the Mira on, on a specific wall or a Maestro in at the end of a room. So they bring a lot of Intel and they are pretty strong with that. We're introducing a new mechanic uh, that is called Shattered Glass that will allow players to get close to these gadgets, uh, use their melee against their glasses and shatter them. Our objective here was to allow the attackers to have more tools to get rid of these gadgets. So they are not that dependent on their load that they're carrying. Uh, when they get shattered, uh, they obstruct the view from the other side, either the observation tool or in the case of the Mira, from the other side of the wall. For Maestro, uh, you can shatter the small doors he has and that will make the Maestro unable to see when the doors are closed. Uh, he'll need to open them and once they're open, they can, he can shoot as always and also gather intel. And for the VP cameras, it's more of the same. You can get close to the camera, melee the glass and the glass will break and the operators on the observation tools, we won't be able, they won't be able to see anything. Uh, once they are uh, break, they won't be able to use the red or yellow pink. Uh, all the sound feed uh, will remain connected. So you don't see, but you can hear what's going on, which is also a, an interesting piece. We think that this change is not going to radically affect these gadgets. Uh, what we're doing here is giving more uh, options to the players. Uh, if they find themselves in a situation where they are close to a Mira or close to a Maestro and they are uh, without explosives in them, they could use the melee uh, to shatter the, the glasses and they will gain uh, that advantage. Really, uh, the new smoke doesn't look that different. We've created a new BFX and a new zone FX. Uh, I think we've achieved to make it easier to understand where the limit of it is. But yeah, it's, it's not that different. We also made some changes in the damage. So in the past, uh, the damage was decreasing uh, while you were inside the smoke area. But the new damage is going to remain stable during all the time when you are inside. Currently, uh, depending on how the canister is placed, the cylinder will deploy uh, in weird ways sometimes, making the gas get through through the walls or even the floors and ceilings. Uh, sometimes this is used uh, by accident and sometimes is intended and even some uh, default plans in some maps uh, can be denied with, with this small glitch or strategy, let's say. So we've included a new propagation system that is based on the current fire propagation system. Uh, what it basically does is that it avoids all the time to get through walls. And what the smoke does now is that it tries to propagate uh, through the holes he found. So if you threw it uh, next to a window, it might propagate depending on the exact position, but it will propagate through the window or get through the door in a similar fashion to how fire propagates.
North Star will also introduce a few updates to help make sure you see what you need to see when you need to see it. For details on some visual changes to bullet holes and eliminated operators, here are user experience designer Sebastian Francois and game designer Mathieu Lacombe. Uh, we've all done this. We, you enter a room that was thrown and suddenly you die to a wall. Uh, yeah, we're tackling the bullet holes. Today we have people shooting a small 9mm in a wall and then try to peek through it. Um, we're tackling the stopping to make it more fair on both sides. You will never be able to see from a single bullet hole. So if you draw in the room, you know that there won't be anyone looking you through a people or something like that. No. The, the crumble system doesn't change at all. If you put three bullets with a DMR in a wall, it will still destroy the same way. If you're using the shot, uh, shotgun or CSRX to create some destruction, they will work the same. The issue now, now with, the, with the corpse is that they won't be replicated the same way for uh, all the players. So sometimes a uh, line of sight will be available to you, but it won't be available for another one. So you, you will, that will lead into like, very unfair situations where you're going to take decisions that maybe one of the best ones, just because of the, the replication of the body. So the way it's going to work now uh, is that when an operator dies, the body will fall, and just a few seconds later, an, uh, an icon will appear. So it's going to be a semi-transparent icon, uh, we, because we want you to just have the same amount of intel without the, the frustration and issues that comes with an actual body. So another, yeah, another benefit of the icon will also make it much easier for you to know who died. Because we know that sometimes with the, the skins that we release, not necessarily easy. And also just the way the body falls. So yeah, the icon will also give you like more, uh, like a more precise intel. Might make the game look a bit less realistic. But for us, the, the main goal with that is competitive integrity. It's something we are striving for. We know it's, it's been an issue for a while, like this particular issue. Uh, we've seen it recently. Uh, but, uh, but we are really striving for competitive integrity, and, uh, and we think this changes for the better. Another commitment we made at the Future of Siege reveal was to refine core gameplay elements, like the health and armor system, the way barrel attachments work, and the death experience. Let's go again to Seb and Matt to discuss these changes. So regarding the armor system, uh, currently the armor system is based on damage modifiers. And we already have a lot of damage modifiers in the game, like with limb penetration, wall penetration, uh, drop off damage over distance. So there's already a lot regarding damage modifiers, so the armor system in there makes it really hard for you to know uh, what is the impact of, of the system. It feels like sometimes picking a three armor, you just feel like you're picking a slower operator. You don't really know what is the advantage of picking that operator. Uh, so we want to improve that and make the system much clearer. We're just going to be converting uh, armor to L. So that means that a one armor operator will still have 100 HP. But then a two armor operator will have 110 HP, and then a three armor operator will have 125 HP. So obviously with the change, um, Rook needed a change too, like a slight change. So now Rook will provide like an extra 20 HP uh, to, to, to his teammates. The intent of the change is just to make it much more tangible for you to know uh, what armor means in the game. So now it's health. And also we want you to be able to tell at any given time uh, how much health you have left. So that should help you uh, take better decisions also. Uh, should you engage in that fight or not? So we want to give, also give you more information. Uh, so we took the opportunity of changing health also to, um, to change Finca. Uh, Finca currently is kind of an exception because you just have a temporary boost um, to your health. So we, we wanted to remove that and just make it like a regular heal. It's been a while since we touched the uh, muzzle attachments. Those are receiving some changes so they are more clear to the players. When you keep one of them, you will have a better time understanding what they do. Um, because currently, while well, you ask your friends, you ask a, someone on Twitch what they use, but we want to make sure that the players have the choice and they know the variety of stuff they, will, they, they, they do to a weapon. The compensator is mostly changing to really only affect the left and right recoil. So if you're a big fan of the Scorpion but you're missing your shots, that could be a good, uh, uh, good idea to equip the uh, compensator on. If you have a hard time with left and right recoil, this is the attachment you want to use now. For the flash either, now it's only affecting the hop time. So this means that if a gun kicks too high too quickly for you, you will be looking at the flash either. 
So this leaves us with three main attachments that are vastly different. We have the muzzle brake that recenters your shot more quickly, the flash hider that helps you not go too high too fast, and the compensator that helps you with the left and right movement. And we are not changing the VFX or the fire that comes out of the barrel. Everything will be feelable. I mean, you will equip this one over the other one and you will notice a difference. That's the goal. So what we wanted to achieve with the new death uh, sequence is making, making it much easier to understand for you how you died. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's something very, very important in Siege because many things can happen. You can get shot through a wall, you can die to a gadget that you never saw. So it's really, really important. And we also want to keep you in the action. Not break the flow, like you died, it's okay. Go into your observation tools and give call-outs to your teammates. So the first thing that happens when you die, the camera will go out of your operator's body and, and will, it will be focusing on what, whatever killed you. So it can be an operator, a gadget, uh, that's going to be the first phase. The second phase uh, is the replay phase. So now you, it's, there's no, not a lot of changes to that. It's just going to be the replay showing you how you died. So you won't be stuck in the death sequence as you were before. You will be able to skip uh, all the phases before. So you will be able to go as fast as you want into the support phase. One of the intentions of working the death sequence was to, uh, was to also keep you in the action. And that makes total sense also with the gameplay after death that we are trying to introduce uh, currently on the TS. So the idea is just to, you died, it's okay. Now you just transition as fast as you can into your observation tools and keep playing, keep helping your team uh, win the round. One of the biggest updates in the works for Siege is gameplay after death, which introduces the ability to control drones and gadgets after you die. This is still in development and is not launching with Northstar, but we are bringing it to the test server and we want your feedback. To tell you more about one of the most impactful features for the future of Siege, please welcome game director Aurelie DeBont. I think the test server, uh, it's uh, the environment for the player to experiment uh, the feature and, uh, and to give feedback on this feature. And this will be very helpful for the team uh, to adapt and readjust. In attack side and defender side, we have added some gameplay elements, so for players, after their operators are dead. For attack side, dead players can control and move their own drone. So, and just to be clear, uh, you cannot control the, the drones of another player. Uh, also, uh, we added uh, some feedbacks. Uh, when the owner dies, uh, automatically on the regular drones, and it's only on regular drones, uh, antenna are deployed on the, on the drones. So, player can uh, know if the drone is uh, controlled by uh, a dead player or by an alive player. The ability of the observation tools can be used. So that means a dead player who plays zero, for example, but can use the laser from the Argus camera. On the defender side, uh, Echo, Maestro and Modi can control and use their ability after death. Also, we have added some new tools uh, to counter attacker uh, drones. So we have reworked the bulletproof camera. So now you can rotate uh, the camera and shoot an UMP dart uh, to disable uh, attacker electronic gadgets. The first player inside the camera can use the ability to shoot. So there is no notion of uh, ownership as we have with uh, main abilities, because it's a secondary gadget. So this uh, will help uh, defenders to deny drones by disabling them. We have added uh, a drone counter. So the drone counter is only displayed for defenders to help them to track uh, the number of regular drones uh, their team has destroyed or captured. So this uh, is to encourage defenders um, to be aware of the importance of destroying drones, especially uh, in the context where dead players can focus on droning uh, them out. So uh, I'm very excited by this uh, new feature because um, you can still have an impact on the outcome of the round. Even after you, your death, you can still help your team. We are aware that a game after death will affect the whole game balance. 
uh, especially for operators whose abilities revolve around uh, observational tools. And uh, we have started to work on this. So, the, for example, uh, the fact no, you can uh, shatter the glass of the Maestro Tourette uh, with a melee to deny the vision is a good example. And we have also some other planes, uh, like uh, we are working to, to explore a new secondary gadget around uh, deny information, for example. And the most important aspect uh, we want to be sure before releasing this feature that is that it's never a valid strategy to take careless fights early in the round and uh, not care about dying. So even if the change uh, means that uh, dying will be a, a bit less punishing than it's been before, uh, but we still uh, want it to be uh, very punishing. But as you know, uh, balance uh, a live game is without end and this uh, evolves uh, back constantly. Thank you all for watching our reveal of North Star. The test server will be going live on Tuesday, May 25th, and we hope to see you there. Now, for one last reveal, a realistic Hibana figurine inspired by the game. This highly detailed figurine comes with a unique code to unlock an exclusive weapon skin and is now available for pre-order. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the test server.